Please stand as I invite Steve Bradley to the podium to offer the invitation and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Scott. You know, it occurred to me when I was asked to give this indication that although we certainly have a long list of very serious issues in this country that we should be worried about and that we should seek spiritual guidance for, it seems to me that the one issue that should trouble all is the divisiveness that exists in our nation today. I believe most would agree that never in recent memory have we been so acrimoniously divided as a nation. And so with that in mind, I offer this prayer. Dear Lord, we come before you today divided as a nation and divided as a people. We seek your divine intervention in showing us the way to come together, to work together, and to seek out common ground that will allow us to find answers to those deeply felt issues that separate us. We ask also that you inspire our leaders, that you impart upon them the wisdom, the patience, and the insight to lead us in such a way that brings us closer together, not pushes us further apart, so that we may work together for the common good that benefits us all. In your name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic So welcome, and I want to say, uh, of course, welcome to the governor, and, and, and welcome to all of our guests today. We have we have a lot of them, and we also have a few announcements. Thanks to everyone who uh, actually reached out with some great stuff that they're going on. Uh, every week, I want to highlight uh, great things going on in our community that Kiwanians are a part of, and we have a lot of takers this week, so let's take it away with slide number one. So Wednesday, October 24th, which is tomorrow, you can help support uh, Triumph Services. Is Brooke Bowles here? Where is she? Okay, so Brooke is the executive director. She's a member of Pilatus. Nick's on the board, as is uh, Darcy, as you see up there. Triumph Services does tremendous work uh, with uh, folks with developmental disabilities and getting them uh, situated and trained to make sure that they have uh, fulfilling lives. They do phenomenal work. And on Wednesday, if you go to Regents Field for a real good window of time there, you can uh, drink some wine and uh, support these great folks and support this great cause. So please show up to Regents Field. I am told I'm uh, on great authority that Jim Knowles is not at all involved in this event. And so you can guarantee that it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's go to the next one. So the next one, so after you drink a bunch of wine, you're going to be hungry. And that's good news, because you can uh, you can go to the 8th Annual Taste of the Magic City, uh, which supports Empower Industries. And I think I see Billy Forbes and Dalton Smith in the back there. And Empower does great work. Uh, in fact, Billy gave me a little spiel here, and I'm just going to read it. So this Thursday night, Empower Ministries is hosting the 8th Annual Taste of the Magic City. Over 20 restaurants, including the Bright Star, will be sampling their food at the Birmingham Botanical Gardens. Taste of the Magic City benefits Empower Ministries, a not-for-profit that serves the adults of the Jefferson County area with free health care and educational resources to obtain their GED and gain employment. Tickets may be purchased online at Empower Ministries. If you have any questions, Billy said, just bother him at any time. At work, at home, if he's on a phone call, just take the phone right out of his hand and slam it down and ask him about this event. Uh, but it's this Thursday. It should be a ton of fun. And again, Jim Knowles is not at all involved. So let's go to the next one. So uh, in this picture, uh, you'll see uh, Kiwanian uh, Randall Woodfin. Uh, and, and this is celebrating a 1,000 days until the world games. So July 26th to 20, uh, July 16th to the 25th, 2021. If you want to get out your phones and mark your calendars, that's when it's happening. Uh, it's a tremendous event that takes place all over the world. Birmingham is lucky uh, to have it. Uh, there are tons of great events. Uh, Scott Adams, who's our president, is involved. The chair is uh, Jonathan Porter, uh, and Regents, I think, is the chief uh, sponsor of that uh, of, the, of the major park. And, 
fun time that's going to be uh, happening at the World Games. So if you don't know about this, please check it out. There are a ton of fun events, stuff you've heard of, stuff you definitely have not heard of. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's a big deal uh, that Birmingham has. It. So I think we have one more. All right, so this uh, comes to us from Mr. Fleming. Where are you, Mr. Fleming? All the way in the corner over there in Red Birmingham. So the 16th Street Baptist Church, I don't need to tell you about that. They are involved in a contest where I think they are either in first or second place right now. Second place, which means you need to get out there and vote. And if you go to voteyourmainstreet.org, uh, you can sign up to vote. You can vote every day between now and the 26th. This is $150,000 for one of the major institutions, not just in Birmingham, but in the world, in the 16th Street Baptist Church. Anyone who's ever been to a service there, know Arthur Price does a phenomenal job treating this not just as a, a, a place of faith, which is primary for him, but also as a great historical monument, not $150,000. Uh, we would love to take that off uh, folks' hands and, and deliver it to the 16th Street Baptist Church. So we're actually gonna leave this slide up so you have a chance to take a look uh, at, this, uh, at this website so you can go to it either later or on your phone or wherever to vote, because we would definitely want that 150 to come. So thanks to David and Brent Birmingham for promoting this. I am more than happy to promote your events up here and shill for your organizations. We had uh, wonderful organizations represented today, wonderful causes and a lot of fun events. Please just send them to me, send them to Doxy, send them to Scott, uh, and we are more than happy to share what is going on. Um, but we, so we're not going to take it from the crowd, but I'm happy to well, do it. We will absolutely send them out to them. All right. So uh, we have tons of guests today, so we're not going to introduce everyone by name, but if everyone who is a guest uh, and is a host of a guest could stand up and then we could just recognize everyone with a round of applause, that would be great. So uh, thanks so much, and I will turn it over to President Scott Evans. Thank you, JJ, and welcome to all our guests. It's wonderful to see such a big crowd here today. I'm so honored to have the governor here. Um, and so let's move ahead with our introduction of the head table. Uh, Leticia Watkins is the CFO at FIBA Health, the Kwanian since 2016. Jim Gorey, president and CEO of Raspbill and Gorey, Kwanian since 1992. Peggy Stripling, senior director of development, UAB, Kwanian since 2001. J.W. Carpenter, who you just heard from, the executive director of the Birmingham Education Foundation, Kwanian since 2013. Steve Bradley, Steve, thank you for that wonderful invitation. A good reminder to all of us. President of Bradley and Associates, Kwanian since 1999. And finally, David Faulkner, representative of Alabama House District 46, Attorney Partner Christian and Small, Kwanian since 2015. David has the honor of introducing our guest. Please join me in recognizing the head table as David comes forward. I do have to say hello to my, my friend and legislative mentor and maybe legislative father of some sort, Jabo Wacker, uh, Senate Rules Chairman. Thank you for being here, Jabo. It's a great honor for me today to get to introduce our governor. When Big Jim Folsom ran for governor in 1946, he campaigned upon an anti-corruption platform and famously carried a corn shuck mop and a suds bucket to his rallies across the state. While holding the mop above his head, Folsom told his supporters he planned to scrub the Capitol in Montgomery from the basement to the dome. Then he said he would open all the windows. He said, I'm not going to stop scrubbing until I get a clean, green breeze from the north and everything smells nice and pretty again. After he was elected governor, a friend asked Folsom what he meant by a green breeze. Folsom replied, Quote, hell if I know, but they voted for it. <laughs> <laughs> Since Kay Ivey became governor of Alabama, the clean green anti-corruption breeze that Big Jim discussed so vividly 
72 years ago, has blown through our state capitol building. I served on the House Impeachment Committee that considered the charges against Governor Robert Bentley. Believe me when I say if you want to be tested as a freshman legislator, try being appointed to the first panel to consider the removal of a constitutional officer in more than a century. There was a dark and ominous cloud hanging over the Capitol Dome during that time, but Governor Ivey quickly dissipated that cloud with integrity, ethics, transparency, and a strong dose of the honest straight talk that has become her trademark. Those of us who serve in Montgomery know that she is an incredibly hardworking governor and that hard work is evidenced by the fact that Alabama has the lowest unemployment rate in its history. We passed the largest public education budget in state history this past session under her watch. I am particularly fond of her strong start, strong finish education initiative. And I am personally working with Governor Ivey on legislation to make computer science mandatory to be offered to all Alabama students in our middle and high schools across this state. And Alabamians across the board, regardless of race or economic status, have a better quality of life as a result of her efforts. It's no surprise that several polls recently ranked her as the third most popular governor in our nation. And she has become as beloved among Alabamians as the woman she most admired in her youth, Governor Lurleen Wallace. Fellow Kwanians, it is my honor today to introduce to you Alabama's 54th governor, Governor Kay Ivey. Thank you so much, David, and thank you for your service in the Alabama legislature. And I particularly appreciate your interest in advancing education. And I'm honored to be with you all today. Birmingham Kiwanis Club, I'm pleased to be with you. And um, thank you for inviting me to be here and go with you today. It was on April the 10th, 2017, with three hours notice, I put my hand on the Bible and took the oath of office about 6 p.m. that night to become the 54th governor of the great state of Alabama. I then spoke directly to my fellow Americans, fellow Alabamians, and I promised we would have an open, honest, transparent administration. I promised that we would work to make our state even better, and we would work to make our government more effective. And I also promised that we would bring back now, conservative values, protect the unborn, defend life, protect the Second Amendment, and defend our guns. Promises made and promises kept. We have delivered on those promises. And then we set about to steady the ship of state. As David mentioned, the state of Alabama was under a very, very dark cloud for a long time. And we needed to steady the ship. <clears throat> to steady the ship, we started with executive orders and we closed down <coughs> unnecessary task forces who <coughs> banned lobbyists from being appointed to boards and commissions. And we set about to make Alabama stronger again. Next, we went and looked at our cabinet and evaluated very carefully every cabinet position and the personnel in it, same with the staff. And we changed out about half of our cabinet. And now, we, when we did that early on, we provided a very strong set of cabinet officials and staff members with high integrity, and each with a selfless devotion <coughs> to our great state and to both people. And then another step in steadying the ship of state was to open the communications between the governor's office and the legislature. Thank you, Sir Wagner, for being here and Representative Fowler. I appreciate y'all. But there had been very little, if any, communication going on, and we have opened that communication 
Because when you've got an open communication, you can, you can build partnerships. You may not agree all the time, but you can certainly disagree agreeably to move our state forward. So having steadied the ship, we then set about to bring progress and stability to our great state in the areas of education, uh, economic development and the economy, public safety on our highways, and of course our budgets. In education, um, and I'm going to go, since this is football season, I'm going to uh, check our box scores in each one of these four categories. But in education, we're moving our state in the correct direction. We all know that our education system needs improving. As a former high school teacher, I clearly know that to make improvements in education, you must have strong leadership and a strong plan. Early on, I offered my strong start, strong finish initiative in education that addresses the three core phases of a student's learning journey. Early childhood, pre-high school, and post-high school. Strong start, strong finish has three parts. Pre through three, pre-K, computer science, Alabama, advanced training, better jobs. So in pre-K, we have now broken the 1,000 classroom mark. We have 1,040 classrooms of pre-K being taught in our schools. We have a pilot program ongoing called pre-K through three, pre through three. And that is to take what's taught in pre-K and infuse it in what's taught in K, one, two, and three. So that at the end of the third grade, the child is reading at or above grade level. If a child is not reading at grade level by the end of the third grade, that child is four times less likely to finish high school. So there's a lot to be done in education, but we're making strides in the right direction. Computer science for Alabama, in 2016-17, there were only 86 school, high schools in Alabama that offered computer science. Today, we have 35% of our 500 plus schools, high schools offering computer science. We're also working again with the legislature. We appropriated funds for professional development for teachers in computer science. And we allocated funds to start an Alabama high school for cyber technology and engineering. You located in Huntsville, you got the School of Fine Arts here in Montgomery and Birmingham. And Mobile's got the math and the School of Math and Science. So cyber technology and engineering will be uh, online for too much longer. So having done computer science, the next category is uh, advanced training better jobs. When I go to the Farnborough Air Show, the Paris Air Show, CEOs around the world are very complimentary. They, they just let it be known how much they appreciate our workforce here in Alabama. And of course, that's music to my ears, especially coming from folks who have firms in our, com in our com uh, state. But they also ask about, well, what are you doing to fill the pipeline? So with badge training and better jobs, first of all, this is a workforce development initiative where we will equip some 500,000 of our existing workers with access to, so they can get a two-year degree or certificate or a certification advanced training for better skills because the jobs of tomorrow are those that are going to require more than a high school uh, graduation diploma but less than a four-year college degree. So we're working to provide advanced training to some 500,000 of our workers. And then um, the education and the box scores are stacking up nicely, but there's just a whole lot more to continue to do. And we'll keep plugging in this direction because we're on the road to improving our education system. And then in our economic development arena and um, the economy, and certainly Secretary of Commerce, Greg Canfield does a great job having us identify potential investors that might be interested in lo locating in Alabama. Back in uh, Greg Canfield was the first person I met with the next morning after I was my first morning on the job as governor. Because I clearly know that economic development is important to the success of our people and our state. 
So uh, you and I have experienced the lowest unemployment in our state's history. And um, today we have, for the fifth consecutive month, the largest number of Alabamians working than ever before. We had 2 million 48,000 people are working today. 16,000 new jobs have been created while I've been gone over an investment of some $8 billion to bring those jobs online. And it's restoring the trust in government that, that um, encouraged Toyota and Mazda to make their announcement that they were going to bring um, 4,000 jobs to Alabama with another investment of $1.6 billion. And truly, firms are learning that we in Alabama are real serious about restoring trust in government and uh, building a thriving economy. So after I became governor, I realized we only had 313 state troopers on our highways, just 313. That wasn't enough, that wasn't good enough for the safety of the officers, much less for all of us that are traveling the roads. So again, working with the legislature, we appropriated monies for, so a Leo could hire, our train, and equip uh, more state troopers. So regardless of what you've been hearing, by this coming February, we will have more than 400 Alabama state troopers well-trained and on the highways to protect your safety. Now, Y'all, that's a 25% increase in the number of state troopers on our roads to bring law enforcement and safety to our people. And then finally, our budgets. As uh, David mentioned, we have, um, I was proud to offer and the legislature adopted it. And I signed it, the largest education investment in, our, in a decade, in the last decade. And that investment in education helped us make the largest um, program increase ever in our history, $18.5 million for pre-K. That allowed us to start more pre-K classrooms. We also were able to provide teachers a pay raise. And then the general fund is $1.6 billion. It also allowed us to be able to pay um, extra pay raise for our state employees who well deserve it. So box scores are looking like a that of a winning team. And so let me put the football spin on this upcoming important election just two weeks from the day in, in, a, in a perspective that we can all understand. The state of Alabama is looking for a head coach. I'm the only person applying for the job that has actually experienced coaching at this level. The state of Alabama has won every single game while I've been head coach. If you have to unemployment, budgets, you name it. Now, if I wasn't doing such a good job, I wouldn't mind you considering someone else. But our team, the state of Alabama, is undefeated and on a pathway to prosperity. Much improvements have been made, strides have been made, but y'all have just a lot more yet to do that needs attention and addressing. So, I just ask you, what search committee would ever consider someone who's never coached at this level to be a head coach? So I humbly ask you for your support, your prayers, and your vote for governor of the great state of Alabama. from the crowd. Who would uh, like to ask a question first? Yes. Governor, I wonder if you could comment on your plan for improving health care access to the state of Alabama. Say it again, please. Would you comment on your plan for improving uh, access to health care in the state? We, we definitely need to have quality, have access to quality health care throughout the state of Alabama. 
Uh, several of our local uh, rural hospitals, like my own in Wilcox County, have adopted that they've been imposed on themselves a sales tax and some amount to help with that situation. UAB was approved to establish a rural hospital administrative board that partners up with some local hospitals and the UAB team does the um, administrative coding and so forth and so on. But they, I've got a team in place led by Stephanie Azar at Medicaid and Dr. Harris of the Public Health Department providing us info. They've already met with some 18 individuals or groups of health care providers. And so we're going to take a strong, hard look at finding ways to improve access to quality health care all over this state. There's seven counties that don't have any kind of hospital or clinic in them. So we've got to be creative, we've got to be prudent, but we need to be effective, and that would certainly be a high priority of mine going forward. Yes, sir. Back here. Yeah, go ahead. Tony, just a quick question on the infrastructure. Any comments on the gas tax to uh, fund our infrastructure? The infrastructure in our state is essential component of economic development. We have to have strong roads, strong bridges in order to continue economic development. I've been a proponent for an investment in the infrastructure since I took office. I came out in the second half of that first session when I became governor, and I would strongly be for uh, investment in our infrastructure to move this forward. Because y'all, we, we have to have it. And if you use the roads and the bridges, uh, it's imperative that we have good roads and bridges that are safe. Right now, some uh, school buses and emergency personnel have to go miles out of the way um, to not go over a dangerous bridge. Henry? Governor, I watched with dismay this morning while the national news played up uh, Tylepus, Georgia, Ardmore, Tennessee where a never-ending line of Alabama license plates were going across the state lines to buttress their educational systems with lottery tickets that are sold. What is your position with regard to buttressing our educational system through a lottery joining the rest of the states and things like the Mega Million or Powerball those industries which we're not able to partake of here and have to go to neighboring states to leave our dollars. If the legislature could pass a simple lottery, a paper lottery, that might be a good thing. Certainly extra money is always beneficial, but at the same time it would be very difficult for our legislators to pass a just a simple lottery. It gets convoluted when somebody wants to tack on of this kind of gamut. But we'll see. If it comes, if that issue comes to the legislation, they come out with something, uh, it has to be voted on by the people of Alabama. Will you lead that effort? I'll lead the effort to be sure the people of Alabama have an opportunity to vote on that issue if the legislature passes. It would be a constitutional amendment. And also, our budgets, you know, are well rounded right now, uh, the record funding. Right now, the economy is doing good, so the need is not quite as great as it might be somewhere. And so, also we have an increase in the uh, sales tax, online sales tax program, and the more we keep in debt, uh, following the law there, and the more online sales are made, that's an opportunity for a large growth area as well. And one thing I caution you about is the principle of public policy, policy that says never fund an essential service of government with an unsteady source of funding. So be well, but if the lottery, you know, if the legislature passes a purely simple lottery, I expect it'll pass. David? Welcome, Governor. Nice to have you here. Just to follow up on the health care question, Alabama is one of 13 states that has not expanded Medicaid. And by the result of not expanding Medicaid, we have left billions of dollars on the table that have not have, that have not come into our economy. Our hospitals, as you say, are desperately needing a solution. Um, if you're between the ages of 19 and 64 in the state and do not have a job, you do not have health care. 
The studies seem to indicate that not only is it a positive economic impact to expand Medicaid, but an additional 300,000 people will have health care coverage. Is a solution to work with the legislature in coming up with a funding mechanism so that we can join the other states that have reaped the positive benefits from expanding Medicaid? It sounds good, and we all want quality health care for all of our people. But first of all, we've got to be sure that we are doing the very best we can with our existing Medicaid program and being sure that it is as good as it can be. And CMS, they change their mind and their rules from time to time. So you have to be cautious about how you uh, move forward with expansion of Medicaid. And I just uh, encourage you to think about the fact that um, Medicaid has not had to ask for as much money the last set, legislative session that it has in years before because more people are working. More people have access to health care. So expanding Medicaid, nobody has put the pencil to how much you'd have to match. And I think those numbers you will see if you ever do that are very astronomical. So it's a very serious question, a very serious issue, but um, the cost of expanding Medicaid is far greater than it seems to sound like. Dr. Birdie. Governor, as you know, we've got one of the worst uh, payday and title loan sets of laws of any state in the country. Three southern states, North Carolina, Georgia, Arkansas, they have made major reforms. And sadly enough, in our state, the predatory lending laws enable the average percentage interest pay 300%. You can pay up to 456% on a payday loan. Title, the average is 300%. You give up your car as collateral so people can't get to work. Thanks to uh, Senator Wagner, we've gotten reform bills through the Senate. David has been working with us uh, on a statewide effort. What can we do? We know a lot of money is given to the legislators. Most of these country, uh, companies for payday and title, they're not even located in Alabama. That money isn't coming back into Alabama communities. Would you support us in major reform of our predatory lending models as you go? I'd sure be proud to visit the issue with you. Well, thank you. We do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. In the back. Governor, uh, to go back to your football analogy about the head coach and experience, Every new head coach was an assistant coach somewhere. And one of the ways that uh, those folks are uh, analyzed to determine if they have capability is by having a forum where you can compare directly and uh, a head coach to an assistant coach who might be ready to move up. Uh, you have uh, consistently refused to uh, debate your job. Uh, and in most cases, I think you, you cited your busy schedule. Uh, there have been some information that's come out uh, that shows your calendars that are not particularly busy during the times when they were trying to do debates. What is it about a debate that causes you concern or that, that causes you to refuse to give the people of Alabama an opportunity to compare apples and apples? Most folks that uh, want to debate with the media and my opponent, and most folks uh, rather see results than um, sit down and watch an hour long debate. And I just, with the hurricane and the campaign and the official duties of the governor's office, my life's a little more busy than my opponent is. And I'm proud to put my record up, having served in, as a constitutional officer, as state treasurer, lieutenant governor, and as governor. People of Alabama know KIV, and my time can be still a little bit better than uh, preparing for a debate and taking questions that may or may not be uh, relevant to the state's issues. What if they are? Another question? Well, thank y'all so much. Great to be with you. Governor, I like that scorekeeping too. I'm going to use that for sure. Um,
Now, I understand you're going to be around for a little while afterwards, is that correct, I believe? And so some others, you know, have a chance to, to, to speak to the governor face-to-face. Uh, -face. All right, upcoming programs. Let's talk about those. Very excited about some of these, and I hope that all of you who are here today will come back. We have such a great crowd. So, governor, governor spoke about this. So, next week, Secretary of Commerce, Greg Canfield, will be here. Very excited about that. He's going to give us an update on the state of commerce and economic development in our state. Really looking forward to having him here. Uh, as a reminder, uh, uh, Veterans Day falls on Monday, November 12th. So we thought we definitely wanted to have a military themed speaker and thanks to Ed Rao's help, we were able to secure one for November 6th. On November 6th, we'll have a retired Air Force, Air Force Colonel Steve Connolly who will provide a behind the scenes look at special operations from the Air Force perspective. Steve is also, and I love this, a Silver Star and Distinguished Flying Cross recipient. So uh, you military enthusiasts, you won't, you won't want to miss that. Uh, then November 7th, we have our first Connect Over Coffee at Revelator Mount Brook. It's our first small group coffee gathering. Don't have to drink coffee, by the way. I don't, but drop in any time between 7 a.m. and 8.30. Meet some fellow Kiwanians in a great way for newer members of the club to get to know each other. November 13th, remember what Jake Reese said. Great authors and Kiwanis go together like peas and carrots. All right, Forrest Gump author Winston Room will be here. Uh, and, and Winston, by the way, has written on, on a number of military topics as well. Um, who can say they've had uh, a Rick Bragg and Winston Groom in a six-week period, but right here at Kiwana. So you want to come back and hear him on November 13th. And then November 20th, for you soccer fans, you don't want to miss this. Jay Heaps, who is the new president, of the, president and GM of the Birmingham Legion soccer team, will be here that day. And that's also Thanksgiving week, so we're going to do a free guest day. Encourage you to bring your kids or grandkids or other friends who are big soccer fans to come in here, Jay. Uh, and he's going to talk about how we're going to make this a big soccer town in addition to football. Uh, and Jay, by the way, if you don't know anything about him, a very interesting story himself. He's a former um, soccer star at Duke, uh, won the equivalent of the Heisman Trophy in, in soccer. He also was a walk-on on the Duke basketball team. So hopefully we'll hear some, some stories about that. I understand Coach K is a, is a big fan of it. So as you can see, we've got lots of great things coming up. Hope you'll come again. Thanks, and we are adjourned.